today on Vital Insights. On the acute side of the business, the chronically ill are going to drive about 60% of ED visits and probably half of those are avoidable. How do you, technology, proactive care can help to avoid those admissions or push the admission earlier so that they're not as sick when they hit the hospital. Welcome to an episode of Vital Insights, a podcast series focused on thought leaders and healthcare providers who are working to transform the way we care for patients now and in the future. As Chief Operating Officer of Early Sense, Mike has been pivotal in the company's move to take proven technology solutions and create opportunities in the acute and virtual care spaces. His professional passion, is in the marrying of technology and healthcare to improve the health of individuals and the ability for healthcare providers to better manage their population of patients. But today, one of the things I'd like to delve into is the idea of reactive versus proactive care. Mike, thanks for joining us today. Of course. Glad to be here. Um, I'm going to jump right in. You've advocated for virtual care solutions to address long-term chronic care and suggested those are rooted in the idea that we can take the biggest piece of healthcare cost out of the equation by moving care further upstream. In other words, catch issues that represent deterioration before they can exacerbate. Can you talk a little bit about how Early Sense has done that in the past? Sure. Uh, thank you again. Um, so I think the the way that Early Sense has always approached this is we've always been big advocates of uh, all patients being able to be monitored in the right way at the right time, regardless of where they are, right. whether in a hospital, right. whether they're at home, uh, whether in a rehab. Uh, and today, unless you're in an ICU, you don't get constantly monitored. You're very much dependent on a nurse doing a spot check. Right. Um, And what that doesn't provide is a really good understanding of the trend in your health and early signs that something else might be brewing with your health. Right. Um, And so the way we've approached this in acute facilities and post-acute facilities is through the idea that giving a patient an invisible monitor, they never know that they are using it. They don't have to comply with it. and using that to not, not just provide data to the caregiver, because caregivers aren't data scientists and they shouldn't be asked to uh, be, but to give them insights and to be able to tell them when something is changing that we think uh, they should uh, look at the patient, assess the patient, and use their clinical skills uh, to decide if more tests are required, if a consult is required, to look and see if the patient's health is deteriorating in any way. Um, So that's how we've kind of partnered in acute and post-acute facilities over the last 10 years to provide them that level of data uh, and really uh, provide a second set of eyes that guides the clinician. I I actually love that image of the second set of eyes because it's like everyone has to sleep. Everyone has to walk away from the patient at some point in time. Mm -hmm. So just knowing there's this kind of constant underlying, you know, source of information is, is a lovely oversight vision. Um, So in looking at the future, how do you feel technology can help move the the reactive nature of the healthcare system, which you touched on beautifully in your answer actually to the first question, uh, to a more proactive treatment or care model? Sure. So I think, um, you know, when you move outside of the facilities uh, where you don't have a nurse that can walk by and do a spot check, um, and you can't be dependent on uh, a home care visit every single day to check in on a patient. Right. You have to think of ways to get that information to the care team without requiring kind of a synchronous type of visit. Uh, it's been a hard, uh, hard neck for the healthcare world to crack. I would say it's kind of the, the idea of being able to do this and, and not require massive amounts of patient engagement to drive that proactive care. Uh, patients, especially when they're chronically ill, can't manage 20 new tasks to do each day to right. take Absolutely. care of themselves. And technology is the way uh, to supplement uh, kind of these new routines that a patient has to might have to go through uh, to provide the care team with those insights without 
be having to be there, being able to provide that asynchronous data um, and the asynchronous insights uh, to the care team. Uh, and so technology needs to be, uh, a mix of technology needs to be in the home that's going to be as invisible as possible to the patient, um, to not require them to have to add a lot of work to their lives to try and manage their health. Because uh, you don't want to make it seem to them that uh, it's harder now for them to do this than to have to get taken to the doctor or have a nurse come into their house. This should be beneficial to them. Right. And still should provide the provider with uh, a better stream of clinical insights than they otherwise would have been able to get without that technology. Yes, I absolutely agree. And and you touched on something that is near and dear to my heart, which is continuous monitoring. Um, so one of the features we've talked about here at Early Sense is contact-free continuous monitoring. Can you talk a little bit about how that factors into the proactive approach? Sure. So um, I, I come from a clinical background, a physical therapist by background, and I know if you're asking a patient to take part in their care, uh, it's often more difficult uh, to get the results, and for a bevy of reasons, uh, many of which are once you're ill, uh, there's just many things going on for you to manage. Right. Um, so the way that I see the, the the kind of two main ways that early sense has engaged and really has been our focus is that continuous and that contact free. Continuous, um, you're not going to learn what you want uh, from a patient's uh, from the inputs you get from a technology uh, if you're only getting spot checks, because one. You get to point in time. Two, the patient has to remember to perform yep. that spot check. And three, they, you don't know what their state is when they perform it. Did they just climb a set of stairs? Have they been sleeping for the last several hours? So the continuity of what you're learning from each of those spot checks has be, becomes difficult. Continuous, you know, with, with our system, the way that you're going to get the cleanest six to eight hours of data while that patient is laying in bed each day. They're at rest. You're getting it usually during the same time of day. Uh, and it's going to allow you to trend over time and learn over time if they're moving from their baseline because you're getting in that same state each time that you collect that data. Um, so that continuous nature allows us to use machine learning to really understand the, the patient and any potential de deteriorations that they're exhibiting. Uh, in any of via the signs and some the signs that we're collecting uh, from the sensor on the contact free side um, You know as I as I, we were talking about earlier invisible. I, I like to think of Compliance it has to be invisible for a patient. Um, they can't have to Remember if we want to get this every single night. They can't have to remember to plug it in to charge the battery to put a strap on their arm because they will forget sometimes, and that interrupts that flow of data and the ability to really trend appropriately. Right. So the more invisible it can be, the more it's not on the patient's mind that they're even being monitored. And if they know they're being monitored, that by itself will change their vital signs. Right, because it causes so anxiety. It's, and... <laughs> it's, it's really about just that, the, the, giving some, the care team that cleanest amount of data that you can without asking the patient to participate in that aspect of their care. So you brought up a really interesting, I actually want to unpack a whole bunch of that, but unfortunately we don't have time to. So I'm just, just going to focus on one thing, but um, in terms of providing support to providers who are enabling this type of care, mm -hmm. um, how does scalability factor into the equation for early sense? Um, so in other words, if you, if you are, if you're bringing this technology or, you know, the early sense solution into a patient's home, mm -hmm. um, for that provider, how do you support scalability? So I think one of the biggest, uh, pieces when you're thinking about, cause in, in the end, there's two customers, there's the provider and there's the patient. Absolutely. Um, and so when you design the system, when you design how you're going to use this, um, the challenge is we have to understand what the patient is looking to get out of this and what's gonna drive behavior there, and what the provider's goals are, how they're gonna define success, and how we're gonna make it so that they don't spend a lot of time or money supporting the system. So the way we've, you know, the way we've focused on here is, you take this out of a box, you plug it in, and the patient should be, in most cases, be able to do it themselves or a family member, and you're done. 
you, you place it under the mattress, you place the, the device and you plug it in and you're done. And there's no maintenance um, and there's no configuration that's required. And so it's really meant to be at, at a consumer level of plug and play. And that's gonna reduce any administrative burden that you might have as a provider organization. You don't wanna become an IT shop. Right. And so being able to then just send this to a patient, there's a one page, take it out of the box instruction and tell them how to plug it in. And then providing them the, in the actual service, you're providing that uh, the, the data to that provider. But the big thing there again is not making that provider have to be a data scientist. Give them the insights they need to have via the machine learning that we use in the system. They can see the vitals, but they don't have to be the primary person interpreting them and looking at every single patient. We should be able to tell them who you should look at, who you should prioritize, and then why once you get there based on the changes we've seen and how that's affected that our, our health score for that particular patient. And so it's really trying to make this so that the provider is being led to the right places to look um, and doesn't feel like they're having to spend extra time to learn the this information through, through a bunch of digging. One of the things I love that you just said is you called out how you're supporting kind of both ends of the equation. So you've got the patient on one side for whom mm -hmm. this needs to be really simple plug and play. And on the other side, you've got the provider and making it really simple for them to kind of interpret the stream of data that is exists in between them. Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, so lastly, I just very quickly to wrap up, I think the idea of, of proactive care, so going back to kind of the, the theme of this interview, has a huge role to play in addressing major staff shortages that we see on the front lines of healthcare that have been there for a really long time and the pandemic, of course, only exacerbated. How do you see technology solutions like early senses being a part of that conversation? Sure. So I think um, it, first, absolutely, and that 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 the staffing shortages, the the cost concerns, uh, come at both the the staff that are going to do home visits with more patients being at home and wanting to be treated at home after post COVID. Yep. Um, and on the acute side of the business, you know, the chronically ill are going to drive about. 60% of ED visits and probably half of those are avoidable. How do you, technology, proactive care can help to avoid those admissions or push the admission earlier so that they're not as sick when they hit the hospital. Right. They can be managed quickly and go back home versus a long stay that's, you know, is going to require more extensive care, potentially rehab, et cetera. So that, that diversion of uh, care to the lowest cost environment, the most appropriate environment, is really important. And it's the ability to, to feed those insights to a care team is really what drives that. You will not get that without technology. Right. Um, and I think we believe you don't get that if all the technology you put in place is disintermediated and is one by one by one pieces of technology the customer, the patient needs to use, or that they need to... Uh, comply with, that they need to participate in. So you have to have that mix of where can you make this invisible versus requiring compliance. Um, on the home health side, that home health nurse should be in there when it's at the top of their license for them to need to go into the house. Right. Um, it shouldn't be just to take their vitals. There should be, they should be able to walk in and know what they're walking into via the data and the insights that their clinical partners via technology have provided to them. And what that also helps the, you know, helps to do is the better the technology, the better the insights, the more patients a uh, care team can assign to a given nurse on the care team, to a given individual on the team, and still get that same level of insight and service from that person. Uh, because they know that they're gonna have that second set of eyes. Right. That is monitoring the patient in a way that they that they trust and that they're confident is going to feed them the data that they need to best care for the patient. Absolutely, and you're absolutely right. That does increase capacity, which is at the end of the day what we want to do. <laughs> yes. With, yes. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate the time to sit down and talk to you. Thank you. Thank you.